the slice of pie always looks bigger in another's hand. That's a quote from Fyodor Dostoevsky and the Brothers Karamazov, which I just recently finished. It's probably one of those books where it's like, I should definitely revisit it when my brain has finally finished developing. But anyways, yes, it's not a poem. It's just a passage from the novel, but I'm allowed to break the rules, I think, because this is my channel. Um, if you don't think so, then then maybe you could see me outside or something like that. But regardless, this passage is still pretty poetic in my opinion. And just a quick little reminder, I sort of struggled to sort of announce what this series is meant to be doing in the first one because I'm not a good YouTuber at all. But yeah, uh, if you want, you know, feel free to criticize. But the main point is to get this sort of club feeling going. And so if you have any you want to share from yourself or just someone else's that you like, please drop them in the comments and then maybe they'll be featured in a video because that's what I really want to do is do this like poetry community type of thing. For me, this is just a sweet little reminder not to let jealousy get a firm grip over your mind. It's pretty cliche, but we often look at the rich and famous and want what they have because it seems so luxurious and nice but we often forget that they too have their own problems. Their slice of the pie definitely looks pretty big, but when we ourselves have it, is it really that delicious? You know what I mean? Yeah, this one's pretty simple. Uh, I just really enjoy the one, because I think it's, there's literally like a massive explosion outside. But yeah, this one's pretty simple. Um, I just think you should read Brothers Karamazov. There's something in it for everyone. and. Uh, it paints a really nice picture of humanity, and this is one of the big reasons why. So, moving on. Decisions. A Pandora's box. Impossible to reel in. Mistakes and triumphs floating in the ether. All the same. What is done is done. This one here can be seen as another reminder, pretty clearly, not to let mistakes bring you down and triumphs cor corrupt your mind with pride, so to speak. However, the main reason I made this one is sort of the philosophical implications of decisions themselves. Just like in the last episode with sleep, I think there's some, some interesting and quirky stuff going on with decisions themselves and sort of what they really are. Like I mentioned towards the end, people will tell you what's done is done, and that sort of reveals something quirky to be, to use that word again. Decisions are our own free will. We can make decisions as we please, any time of the day, really. There's not much stopping us from making pretty basic decisions. Obviously, when it comes to financial ones, maybe not so much, but you, you, you know what I mean. And so, this obviously is a sign of free will. We can uh, decide to eat something or wear something, but it sort of feels like that action derived from free will gets rid of it at the same time. You see, there's not like an unsend message like there is in Snapchat in real life. We can't undo the decision. And so the question is, does this decision itself get rid of free will? I don't know, it's a tricky one. I would definitely have to think about it more. Maybe there'll be a video, but let me know if I'm, if I'm spewing a lot of BS. Anyways, moving on, moving on, moving on along. The claim of being open-minded inherently hypocritical like a lying politician they fail to look within themselves while addressing the obvious you know we've all experienced that one person who loves to comment on just about anything i mean aren't you watching this video the issue then becomes with these people something similar to what you'll see from like someone who says they're enlightened or a guru who are you to say that you do have enlightened knowledge, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, I think we all need to take a step back and look towards humility. Realize we're all quite silly, and we don't need to make general comments that have potential to bring someone down. Instead, we should look to ourselves before we cast judgment on others. It's a very sort of Christian thing, but it does make sense, and in today's opinion field, <clears throat> opinion field, field, opinion filled age we should uh we should try not to assert ourselves as being correct so much and also just you know why have an opinion on everything especially when you're not an expert in it or something along those lines like people are just doing exactly what you yourself are doing they're just trying to live life and so we can avoid being that politician who repeatedly says 
their opposition, you know, the candidate they're facing off against is bad without sort of announcing their own positions and their own solutions. All right, we've got a few more, you know, more than the last time because I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try. <laughs> Growth feeling like a finite feasible event. Incredibly wrong was I. It is rather the flow of water, infinite, eternal, steadfast. Like I've said before, a lot of these can sort of be a reminder to self, but I want to share them anyways. I know in my own life, I often look at tangible things to sort of measure my own success. When I have X amount of money, when I weigh this number of pounds or kilograms or stones or micrograms or micrograms, Goals like this are great, but I feel like the, the smart goals they taught us in school sort of don't necessarily really get you anywhere. You know, these smart goals, while it makes them easier to achieve, it also doesn't let us know what happens after we achieve the goal. The real fundamental point that I'm trying to make here is that those sorts of smart goals aren't true growth. Your whole life is growth, and that's something I try to remind myself daily because, you know, there's only so much you can do in a day, a year, but when you take it out of your whole life, you can really see the growth. I think this is a powerful realization just to fundamentally get better and enjoy life maybe a bit more than you do right now. So for the final one, um, here's my attempt at something satirical, but Hopefully you see what I'm trying to get at with it. <laughs> Let me know if it falls flat on its face. Looking out into the dreary, overcast world. Uncertainty impending. Oops, I'm on a bridge. Eyes on the road. <laughs> so this one's sort of just like a metaphor, or I guess an allegory, to taking yourself out of the present moment, worrying about the future and what's to come. But then you realize, or you forget to realize, that you are indeed in the present moment. You know, you look over, out across the bridge to the water you know you, you're captivated by it and then <laughs> you forget and then all of a sudden you've uh, you've run into a car and you're thousands of dollars in debt you know i hope you get that sort of allegory um there's only so much worrying we can do about the future and i myself at this critical point in life am worried about the future quite a bit it's also a system in which we live in it's it's always begging you to look towards the future instead of here and now. And you know, there's a balance that we need to strike. There's not much else to be said about that one. It's pretty short and simple. Yeah, don't forget to leave comments. I don't know why I said that so loud. But don't forget to leave comments. Um, peace out.